Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and we're playing Legendary Iron Man difficulty. It is month number 7 and today I got a pretty awesome mission for you. O um, Operation Laughing Skull, Skull uh, which is going to be the liberation of South Africa, so the last of our three African <clears throat> regions that would be liberated, which would finally solidify our footprint in that very important kind of continent where we started and would deal a massive blow to the aliens given that they already lost an area which had vigilance level 30. Now this here is a vigilance level 20 area, mind you, strength level 8, so they could invade either of the already liberated areas um, because from strength level 8 onwards it's essentially free game for them to invade. So we're well uh, consulted to go on to this mission. And boy, oh boy, we got a 10-man squad, which is just lovely. Our B team. Uh, we got Taxman here, Diva Divop, so dual sniper for some extra cheesy action. We're going to see uh, Mike, Mike the Public Bravo as a gunner. We see Ragtime, Sean Sean against uh, uh, Mac Glanson, who's going to be our assault. We got Quick Feet, our specialist. We got Kushais, uh, our Shinobi. We got Puppy, uh, one of our renowned rangers. And finally, we got a Grenadier um, that we got in a mission, I think, um, called Blaze. Definitely not a viewer character, but nonetheless a good character. So, pretty well rounded team. And. We're up against only 40 enemies, so it's going to be a walk in the park, guys. Let's jump right into the action. The and Real. there we are. <coughs> Neutralize all hostile contacts. Good. We got no time limit. We got a pretty open map to play with. Which is always good. That's the edge of the map, by the way. So what I would like to do is get a bit more intel and see what's really going on. Copy that. Moving our Shinobi up. Comes at no surprise that we're going to see a tower again. <laughs> It seems to me that this is always the first building. There is the legendary door where we had quite a few engagements already um, around that door. So might as well have another one. Moving everyone really up to the point where we where we want to use them. I'm going to again play through the door. I really like the idea of opening and closing that door. It's a pretty decent position to play from. I think a very powerful one as well, and it has a lot of flexibility. Good. So, time to move really everyone a little bit closer. That's a disadvantage of such large swats. Um, you are sometimes running out of places where you can take cover. Yeah. Somehow the round is not ending. Well, whatever it is, we can simply end the round ourselves. And there we go, first contact. Interesting to see them um, that early in the map. So I'm wondering, 
Since the door here is open already, we might want to play through this door this time, also to spice it up a little bit. Mm. Like I said, let's get everyone into a solid position, shall we? So, assaults to the front. We're seeing a couple of towers here. Really no surprise. Gunner to the front line. For him, half cover is unfortunately not full cover. Taking the uh, scout a little bit further to the front. Grenadier moves up. I would like Texman to stand over here, mainly because I want different sniping angles. Yeah, and we're steadying the weapon. Quite a bit of Overwatch. Let's see what the pack is doing. Oh my god. Ooh. Are you serious? That is going to be such a nice engage. Oh lord. I already have an idea, guys. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be hilarious. All right. So. If we are indeed kill zoning that entire zone. That means we would definitely get all of them. Flamethrower could hit four of them, which is a great start, to be honest. Question is, whom else do we want on Overwatch? Whom else would we want on Overwatch? It feels we want to give Rag time here an aid protocol because he's going to stand in half cover. Definitely can give him an Overwatch. Not sure what we're going to do with our Shinobi yet. Problems with Overwatches is uh, they don't crit, but. They have very high chances to actually hit them. Now I think we're going to keep him because he has a steadied weapon, so that should be no problem. And here we do have the chance for area suppression, so we're not going to do that either. Of course the natural idea is... And why wouldn't it be, right? Hit the rocket launcher. But... Uh, but I want to save the rocket launcher for the last pack. Uh, so this prismatic pack can actually be pulled with... Um, probably shouldn't have even used the aid protocol here because he had fortify. So we're saving fortify for a bit later. And we're starting with uh, some nice fly flamethrower action. Let's go. Killing it with fire. We're visible here. Nice. All right. 
Wall is open and that should trigger a lot of kill zones, uh, kills. Well, shit, since we're now spotted, I could have simply moved. I could have simply moved uh, the um, Shinobi in the middle of every uh, everyone to get a couple of Blade Storm attacks off. Surprisingly enough, I think we only killed like one. And that's it. Hmm. Good, we can definitely take out the turrets. And... Let's start with easy, no regret kills. 95%, we're starting with a miss. It's perfect. Okay. We're continuing with a bit of chain shot to get rid of the tower. There we go. So he's burning which means he's not a threat anymore. And we do have one, two, three, four threats within uh, this building. Let's continue with the other tower. Good, time to make sure we're eliminating all of uh, the additional threats. We can go run and gun into here, which essentially would allow us to kill two of them. wouldn't be too bad it would uh, it would kill him with blade storm i'm just thinking our options through at this point we don't have salvo so what we could do is we could charge into here essentially tap this guy out then is he burning hard to tell so tap tap the grenadier out and go for the heavy afterwards. And essentially charge over here and kill this guy, which would leave us with the only threat over here, which is the stun lancer. Pretty dangerous foe. Well, and of course the captain here. How should I how could I have forgotten about him? The other option is to simply go to here and deal with the captain. But I think that wouldn't be as effective, to be honest. I think this one here would be more effective. We 
On the other hand, then the captain has a pretty decent chance to flank us, which we wouldn't want to do. Now, at the moment, we're not in a big trouble, and we still have theoretically a flashbang grenade that we could kind of lob into here. This guy is already taken out. Yeah, I get the sense that that's the better idea, to be entirely honest. Could also imagine moving to here and closing the door. Which would require this guy here to essentially move up and open the door. Alright, rapid deployment. I'm mainly concerned about the stun lancer, to be honest. Good. That helped with that uh, with the stun lancer. We're not going to push up. I think we're going to be fine. Uh, on the other hand, I really like the idea of closing the door. I retract my previous statement. We're running and gunning. A bit wasteful, but still. We don't want to deal with him. We still don't know if he is burning or not, so we're going to kill him. The reason why we're doing that first is we're now going to give over teamwork. Which then leads into closing the door, so you can't do that after you take shots. And essentially deal with <coughs> the captain. Nice one. That was an insta kill. Going into full cover. Don't have the best weapon to overwatch, but it still works. Oh, well, seems as if we might have the Chosen coming in. The Warlock. Well, we haven't necessarily prepared for him, but we got such a large group that I'm fine. He gains health when nearby enemies take damage, so we want to single him out. Can summon advent troops, can uh, enter overwatch at the end of the turn, does not trigger overwatch himself, but is easy targeted from high ground, which with two snipers is going to be good, and we don't have a Templar with us. Yeah, and he only has 50 hit points, so that should be fine. It's one of the chosen. This mission just got a little more dangerous. Alright, here we go. Moves in position, tries to flank. Maybe lobs a grenade. But misses. I should have probably used the A protocol on on him, by the way. That's a double move through the kill zone. Very nice. 
So that's two towers down and a rainbow pack of eight, making it 10 out of 40 downed immediately in the first round of combat. The cool part about using a shotgun is, once you're close to the enemy, it's just so effective. So much damage. Alright, do we have aiming angles? Well, we technically do. question is if we're not better off just moving in. This here theoretically could pull another pack, so I actually don't want to do that. We're instead moving up and trying to take shots first. And as a last resort, I would go to a melee attack. Yeah, we're taking the dead eye because that would be a kill if it would hit. Well, minimum damage, I stand corrected, it would not be a kill. Okay, so I got one. Weapons burning ammo fast. Good. Uh, easy enough. I think it's a great moment to not advance further. But instead steady our weapons. Use the time to reload if necessary. Affirmative. Moving out. On overwatch. It's killing time. Moving to overwatch. Yeah, we can't restealth, that's the problem. I really don't like uh, that we have lost concealment in the first round. Yeah, but let's see, uh, there are still around 30 enemies on here. Next, um, uh, the next tactical move is to take high ground cover and essentially better our position. We're not in a hurry though. Oh, we're probably going to see some spectral zombies. But with the amount of overwatches, we should be fine and they shouldn't be too much of an issue. For once, our overwatches are working well. I'm wondering why that couldn't be like it all the time when we're using overwatches. Missed. Well, look at you. Good, we know that we can Get on top of the roof here. Getting rid of the spectral zombie. And let's see if if we would trigger another pack by doing this here. Could always go back. Or not triggering, which is great news. Let's rock. Which means next up, up. We're pulling the snipers up here. Going up. 
And let's make sure that we do have decent aiming angles. Taking blue moves to make sure that we're definitely not triggering something. And this here is a precaution, so that we would have a sniper looking into this corridor and a sniper essentially looking into this corridor. We're soon going to take... Matter of fact, we can do that this turn. I don't think that that here is going to trigger anything. Still being very careful. Yeah. Whenever Saiken says something, the game wants to make sure that he's wrong. Of course it is going to pull something. Good. You know... We can still place a smoke grenade up there, so it's absolutely not a problem. I would like to keep our assault all the way up here so that we can charge in. We're going to use aid protocol to make sure that our sniper is not being hit. Well, he's even out of range, so I'm wondering if the tower has a chance to hit him at all. It's kind of on the edge, as far as I'm concerned. You know, before we're, before we're taking any chances here, sucks using a command like uh, command ability like this. It looks a bit wasteful. But before we're now using a smoke grenade okay. and an aid protocol to make sure that he's not being f uh, hit with a flanking shot, might as well just. Except the fact that we were, yeah, stepping stepping up too far, and we made a mistake, so we paid with a cooldown for it. Not really the end of the world. We will bring this resistance to a close. On the other hand, we got rewarded with really solid high ground here. I'm hearing movement. Yeah, I was about to say, somewhere on the right-hand side. And that's another triple mutant. Uh, triple mutant plus Centurion plus Berserker pack. That comes a little bit from out of the left field, so... Let's see, we got a few options here, not the best ones, but still valid. Divert takes the first shot, trying to get rid of the suppression. Nice little critical hit, unfortunately not a kill. Moving up onto the top. Yeah, shit, that's going to trigger the tower again. I don't care. And you know how we're going to do that. A 
this is going to take care that we're essentially under the effect of full cover. Good. But I what I wanted to do is make sure that we're getting rid of their armor. It's difficult enough to hit them. Don't need to make it even more difficult. Can't move all the way up there, which is a shame. Hmm. I wish we had run and gun. That would be super helpful now. You know what we can do, to be honest? Here's the deal. Perfect option for Oscar Mike. Lots and lots and lots of movement. And we really need it this time. Perfect. So we could definitely stun the Berserk. Interestingly enough, There's a chance to do a sniper shot. And probably also do this here, which is probably the best uh, thing that we could do. Time for a great fortify. Let's get our sniper in position. Over here looks about right. Good. We're going to hand over a teamwork action. Perfect. And at the same time, let's burn all three of them. Very nice area damage, to be honest. One of them is burning. Uh, seems to be the Berserk, which is fine. Okay, we could definitely kill the Muton either of those and then there is the centurion that was our biggest problem <sighs> good what to do guys i think this here is a decent position given that we really can't move any further. And Mike nails it. Good job, one down. Good, so we got still got theoretically the stun available. We got a flashbang available, which I'm considering to use.
Hmm. I don't have death from above on him. Okay. Let me think. Can't do anything. We really can't do anything with our shinobi other than handing maybe handing over another action with command. Moving, out. Moving over here. It's not a bad shot at all, to be honest. Might as well reload, and I mean, what's the odd? It's a hundred percent chance to stun the berserk and deal with him next turn, which is really not bad. We can move into full cover and just flashbang them. I think that's the right call. Orders confirmed. On the move. Good. So let's do the obvious here. Killing this mutant, gaining death from above. Enemy eliminated. Into a single shot onto this mutant. That's two down. Into a single stun. And we're finishing up with. A nice little flashbang, making it very unlikely that that guy is going to hit anything. We're moving up here. I want to deal with the tower as well. Good, we're out of commands, so no more shenanigans with extra actions. But that means also no hits from the, no potential hits from the tower, and we have crowd controlled every single enemy. That was, by the way, into full cover with being disoriented, so I was not afraid of that at all. Good, we were at 10, tower 11, uh, then the pack here was triple mutant uh, plus mutant um, Centurion plus Berserker, so that's 15, um, 16 with the tower, 17, 18. Ninety percent just misses, unfortunately. Dead. 
Good, we gotta deal with the mutant down there. I do have an idea how we can do that. Luckily, run and gun is back up. So we're going to flank him. Which means we don't ta uh, need to take any chances. Nice little hit. And another nice little hit. Good job. Alright, time for the Berserk. Time to deal with the Berserk. Before we do so, let's get rid of the drone. There you go. Like I was saying, we're now at almost 17 kills. No, 18 actually, sorry. So that's halfway through. <laughs> that's the wackest dead eye that I've seen in a while. Good copy. Moving up. Gosh, Berserkers are tanky. I need ammo. Holy shit. Alright, that should do it. Very good. We're not going to trigger anything else. I really just want to take a few moments to appreciate our high ground and keep it simple. Good, 18 enemies down, and we haven't even taken a scratch so far, but we also used a, a few of our consumables. So you always gotta kind of wave this off. And of course, he's summoning them right into the smoke grenade just to make it a bit more awkward uh, in case you were wondering yes they benefit from the smoke as well Yeah, that's good for you, buddy. All right, I'll go. Moving up. And, you know, we're doing the usual things. How about... Starting to kill this guy here, who had Spectre Rupture, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, Mike Bravo, what is wrong with you? That was an absolute bonus kill, which you could have had, but you blew it. Out. 
Yeah, the smoke. I can't blame the smoke. Yep, that's probably it. Alright, time to kill the third one. Big deal. And we want to get some solid positions over here. Because this uh, side is now going to be our playing field. Which means I am interested in moving just a tiny bit forward. Pretty sure it's not going to trigger anything. Taking full cover. Steadying our weapons. Overwatch if possible. And that's pretty much it. I think also it's a pretty good time to uh, end the first episode of this raid. We're halfway through. It's already 50 minutes in. And so far we're looking strong, but we're still fighting against the Chosen and potentially the leader of uh, this facility here. And we got a nice uh, kind of setup to deal, uh, to deal with. It's almost very similar to the one that we fought with the last time. Kind of middle building here, but a bit differently structured. And we do have this beautiful high, high ground here, so we can definitely play along this very open corridor. We're going to see that the next time when we're continuing this mission. If you enjoy the content, please consider putting a like and a comment down below. I read every single comment and I'm usually very happy about the engagement. So if you took value out of uh, the video, I'll consider giving a little bit back. Thank you and have a great day. Bye bye.